At MidAmerica Neuroscience Institute, we have a memory loss center. Why do that? Why have a dedicated center or a dedicated area within a practice to deal with memory loss? And the answer is quite simple. Memory disorders are very common uh, and it's often confusing for families and patients um, who are experiencing memory disorder or other thinking problems uh, about what they should do. So they may wander from physician to physician. They may call the Alzheimer's Association. Um, they may go on the internet and look for things. But what's really needed is a diagnosis. Do you really have a memory problem or are you just distracted and anxious? Are you multitasking too much? And if you have a memory problem, what is the cause of it? The cause is important because there are treatments for most memory disorders. Cures for a few, but treatments for almost all. So learning which memory disorder you have is very important. We used to think that as we got older, um, some of us got senile. That was a word that was used in the past. Um, but in the 1970s and 80s, for the first time, investigation was carried out to find out what causes senility. Why do people become senile, as it were? And the answer was quite startling. It turned out that almost all of the people who had been diagnosed with senility, once they passed away and an autopsy was done, their brains revealed straightforward Alzheimer's disease. So it wasn't until the 1970s or 80s that we realized that almost everything we'd been calling senility was simply Alzheimer's disease, which kicked off an avalanche of research into that disease, which is just now coming to fruition. There are several treatments for Alzheimer's disease, all of which uh, we are well versed in at Mid-American Neuroscience Institute. And there are a number of treatments still under research, just on the cusp of uh, becoming available to the general public, and we are heavily involved in that research. Uh, currently, we have several trials of different treatments and medications for Alzheimer's uh, ongoing. Eventually, within the next five to 10 years, we hope to see a cure for Alzheimer's. So it's very important to treat people now and keep them as sharp as possible for the contingency that there may turn out to be a cure in the very near future. Now, how common is Alzheimer's disease alone? Well, it's estimated that 5 to 10 percent of all Americans by age 65 have a diagnosis of Alzheimer's disease. And by age 85, almost half of all Americans have a diagnosis of Alzheimer's disease. Therefore, this is one of the most common disorders that exists, and it's very likely to touch many families. I'm often asked, uh, do you inherit the propensity to get Alzheimer's or other dementias? And the answer is there, is, there is a little bit of increased risk if you have a lot of relatives with Alzheimer's and slightly decreased risk if you don't. But the fact is it's a very common disease. Now, Alzheimer's is one of several diseases that cause what we term dementia. Dementia is a scary word which simply means you don't think now as good as you used to think. Alzheimer's can cause this problem, but so can a number of other issues. Um, hardening of the arteries is an old term for something that we now call vascular dementia. Turns out it's really not all that common, but it's important to diagnose correctly. And at our memory disorder center, we'll, we're well versed in that. Turns out, just because you have a few strokes on your MRI doesn't mean you have vascular dementia or hardening of the arteries. There are certain other criteria that have to be met, and through our participation in research, we feel like we're well placed to make that discernment for a patient. Besides vascular dementia and Alzheimer's, there are many other causes of dementia. Uh, frontotemporal dementia, primary progressive aphasia, Lewy body disease, Creutzfeldt-Jakob disease, limbic encephalitis, etc. 
So the diagnosis is important and to arrive at this. We use very specialized MRI sequences at Mid-American Neuroscience Institute looking at certain areas of the brain that are of high interest to us. We also um, obtain um, EEGs, uh, certain lab work, and uh, very often a sleep study uh, is indicated if the individual has problems with sleep. Some things can masquerade as dementia. Depression, but on the other hand, patients with Alzheimer's and some of these other diseases are prone to depression. So it's very important to sort out whether it's depression alone or it's a response to the disease. Other mimics for dementia include sleep disorders. If you're very, very sleep deprived, you don't think well the next day. And if that's your only problem and we correct it, your thinking could be fixed. Certain vitamin deficiencies, vitamin B12, vitamin E, um, if significant enough, could cause thinking problems bad enough to be mistaken for dementia, and those are correctable and treatable. Um, and of course, brain tumors and aneurysms and cancer of various kinds also can cause thinking problems, it's in, and it's important to find those diagnoses quickly and act on them um, in case there's a chance for a cure uh, when it comes to cancer, for instance.